Welcome, welcome to Emerge Podcast 360. I'm your host, Maserati. We want to thank you for tuning in. No matter where you are in the metaverse world, we're going to continue to bring you the best quality content and formula that we know how. We want to thank you once again for all the likes, shares, and subscriptions on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now YouTube. Once again, we want to thank you for joining in. This is being brought to you by Northeast Louisiana Counseling, Brochelle Family Insurance Agency, and Stepping Stones, LLC. We have a great show. We have a great guest on the show for you, a legendary coach in Morehouse Parish and 165. It's beyond the game with Coach Earl Thaxton. He's a graduate of Delta High School, the pride and joy. He was a running back at Delta from 1976 to 1979, where he went on and got a scholarship to Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, where he was there from 79 to 1982. While there, he won the Southland Conference Championship in 1982, where he went on as a free agent to the Canadian Football League, where he played for the Calgary Stampede. From 1982 to 84, as a coach, he's been at Delta High School, Bascom High School, Wiseman High School, and Morehouse Junior High School. He had a career as a coach from 1985 to 2018, 34 years, now retired. It's none other than one of my favorite coaches, Mr. Earl Thaxton. Coach, how you doing today? I'm doing fine. How you doing? <laughs> coach, I'm doing well. I'm glad to have you on the show Uh the the response that we're getting is 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 remarkable. The response that you're getting from the people that love you, Coach. Uh, I just I wanna, appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, <laughs> Coach. Uh, how you been doing and what you been up to, Coach? Oh, I've been doing good. I'm, thank the Lord. I've been doing pretty good. I, every day I work out, and then as I get to working out, I started my Sunday school lesson, and that's taking that take most of my time. Yes, sir. I see that you have. Uh, you, uh, every fifth Sunday, you have your Sunday school lesson uh, that you give, Coach. Uh, I have tuned in a couple of times, and you're a great prayer warrior. Uh, coach, kind of tell the people. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir, any time, Coach. You know I always love you. Uh, you got to keep your head <laughs> on the swivel. You know how you say <laughs> Yes, right. Yeah. Coach, kind of tell the people about how it was for you growing up. Oh, I grew up in Oak Ridge, Louisiana, and, and it was the country. I chopped tight and did everything. We weren't well at all, but we were, we had enough to live comfortable. And I had three bro- uh, three sisters and two brothers, and we stayed in the by eight miles from the town of Oak Ridge. We stayed way back in the country, so we weren't like, we didn't have too many people back there. We was kind of all by ourselves. But uh, I had a it was a wonderful childhood and how I grew up and stuff. So I, I wouldn't change for the world. Right, Coach. Um... I know uh, a lot of people don't know a lot about you because you kind of uh, kept to yourself throughout the years. Uh, you really have to see you out in public to get to know you. Coach, kind of tell people what is most understood about Coach Earl Thaxton. Well, most times, we, uh, I just love the smile. I just love life. You know, I'm here on this earth, and when I was in college, they gave me a nickname, and they called me Smiley. And... I'm kind of introvert, you know. I don't, I'm kind of shy, you know. When a, as I start working along and along, I got I was a shyness. But as a little kid, I was shy and I didn't like to uh, start a conversation. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to say it, you know. And so, and I had a speech impediment. I went to uh, when I was in like third and fourth grade. I was in speech therapy. And I had to go. I remember my teacher was named Miss Mooney, and I had to go to Miss Mooney every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And she teach me my sounds and stuff. So you know, that's how the thing went, and that's how uh, most people. You know, I'm a good, easy going person. I don't like arguments. I don't like. I just like everybody to get along with each other and everybody to love each other. Right, Coach. Um, I remember when we was in. I remember uh, being in school when you was our coach. Uh, you was very involved in the uh, Christian uh, federal athletes uh, uh, program where we would have. It was pretty much like church and things like that. Coach, I want to ask you: Do you think uh, that is an aspect that is missing out of the program nowadays? Well, I have been around, but it, it, you know, you can't go wrong 
with putting that in your program because it's, it's a, it's, you want to teach kids about life and who knows the best by life than reading the word of God. He know he know everything. So that's that's the at the when we were when you was in school we called it the FCA Fellowship of Christian Athletes and it was that a program that we meet and we talk about some of the problems kids are having and, and we trying to solve those problems through reading the word of God, you know, trying to see what they tell us to do. And it was it, it was on a uh uh, a, a standard from the state because you know you can't you couldn't do like crafts in school so on the FCA the fellowship for Christian athletes which that's opened the door for us to you know it was strengthened by the high school association and stuff so that's what that's helped the kids and I don't know if if it it couldn't hurt if they would just but you have to be careful about legal terms how you can do it and what you can say. Because everybody looking for a quick buck these days, they be trying to sue you for some. So I don't know how what the seat you could do, but if you could, you could have it, you know, off campus or somewhere like that. But that that's another thing, you, you know. You it'll be rumors and everything flying on there. So it's a hard it's a hard pill to swallow. You don't know what to do. It's, but you want to give the kids a good background when they leave. Because it's some things in their life they ain't going to be able to handle. And the only way you can handle it is through spiritual. And that's why we have so many young kids and stuff. They kill themselves. They commit suicide because they don't, they ain't open up and talking to somebody. And so that's why uh, back then, that's why it was good to have those sessions. FCA, I don't know if they got FCA anymore because I've been out for so long, but that was good to have that. And that's so you could grow the kids up physically, mentally, sociably, and spiritually. And, like, you can't leave out none of those, those things because you leave out one, you lack another one. So but if you get a person in all those faiths of, of life, they can make it through this tough life down here on earth. They can make it through it. Right, right, Coach. I, I know, like I said, it was you, you, you correct him, it was FCA, but I remember when we were right. playing, we we wasn't uh, winning like uh, they did later on in in the, in the two thousand. But I remember you, specifically you, Coach Hanson, Coach Trimble, and uh, Coach Brunson. You guys were right. you guys were very serious about that FCA, and we had no choice but to attend those type of uh, arrangements and, and meetings and functions. And like you said, a lot of guys. Open up. We seen guys uh, turn their life over to Christ. Uh, we saw guys open right. up about things that were going on in the home that we didn't know, and it kind of brought us together closer as a family. Uh, Coach, what do you feel is what we could be a meeting where we can meet this thing in the middle and stay legal, and but giving these kids some type of spiritual foundation? Uh, I, the, the only way I can do it is, is to think about it, is to get them in their home church and make, get a, a program in their church, talk to their pastor and have a, 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 back in my day, they called it BTU. You remember that? <laughs> but they have a training session for the young kids. You can go that route. And I think that probably be the best route. Make sure, cause you know, some of the kids, they just, they, they not going to come every week and they don't, but we, you need to get somewhere it's tough and it's, it's, it's every Sunday thing for every week thing. Cause you know, you, you come one week and you miss three, you'd have lost all what you got the first week. And so what well, I think it, 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 you could just go through the churches and try to get people involved, get the churches pastors involved. Say, look, try to encourage all your young people to come to church. And, 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 to, I remember, uh, <laughs> I heard a preacher say when he, he, he had a drug problem and, and his mama drugged him in church every Sunday. <laughs> she drugged him in church. So that's what we need to do. <laughs> Got to get our kids in church and stuff. <laughs> she drugged him. But, like, it, 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 even adults, it's hard to get them into uh, You have to really, really give your life over to Christ. And you, you just really kind of just say, look, I, I don't 
I don't live long enough to see how the world treats you. There's nothing in the world for us that is you're gonna get evil. The world is dark. And, and and so we can teach the kids say, hey, this world is evil, dark, and, and the only way you can get ahead is put your life in in, in Christ's hands. And so you you trying to get them next turn with them uh, uh get something like that, and I think that'll help them a, a long way down the road. Right, right. Coach, we're going to take a, uh intermission, but when we come back, we want to know the route that Earl Thaxton took from Delta High School to Louisiana Tech on to the Calgary Stampeders. When we come back out this intermission, it's legendary coach Earl Thaxton when we return. Welcome back. Welcome back. We want to thank you for staying tuned in. We're still here with Coach Earl Thaxton. Coach, take us on the journey of young stud. I saw them have some pictures of you, boy, when you was when you was a young man. I, I see you. I see you, Coach. Uh, don't 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 think old them this. I'm like, look at old Earl, man. Take us on the journey from that Mustang life all the way to Calgary Stampeders, man. Okay. Uh, well, I was. Uh, I, I played at Delta under Coach Andrews, and when I was in junior high, I played in Oak Ridge Junior High. And when I was in the sixth grade, I was kind of slow and stuff. But one day, I got my leg bro- broken. I said, oh, man. And they, they, and that's the worst thing they ever could happen. I was sixth grade. My leg got broke. And so I got well. And then the, the next time, I was seventh grade, and I started playing at Oak Ridge Junior High. And, and that time, I said, I ain't going to. I ain't going to get in no foul no more, and I'm not going to get my leg hurt no more. And I said, I'm going to outrun everybody. I ain't going to let nobody kiss me. And that's how I got fast. <laughs> and so I didn't want to get my leg broken. So I left Oak Ridge, and I went to Delta High School, and Coach Andrew was the coach. And we had a uh, freshman team. We didn't play with the Boston. And so the freshman team went back to your own Oak Ridge <laughs> junior high, and you played there. And after my after the ninth grade year, I went. I got in the tenth grade, and I started at my tenth grade year. And I came, and after that, my tenth grade year, I had like about six, seven hundred yards. And then my eleventh grade year, I started again. And my brother came up with James. He was in the tenth grade, so my cousin was the center. His name was Peter Jackson, and my brother was quarterback, James Saxon, and I was the tailback, Earl Saxon. And I, one night I heard on the radio, that we, we played Oak Grove. You go home and you can tell you, Tuesday, Oak Grove, you hear your name on the radio. Boy, that was great to me. I said, my name on the radio. <laughs> and I heard the announcer say, Saxon hand off to Saxon and Saxon block. <laughs> and I, I said, that's a, that's a, a bad scenario. All Saxon plays for <laughs> The center was my first cousin. And so after I left Delta, uh, well, one night how I got recruited, I didn't have no L- L- uh, I didn't think about college. You know, I, didn't, I never thought about it. But my senior year, we were playing, it was always the Jim Marie, and we played Bathurst and Delta. And so I can't, we played that night, and Bathurst had the great Otis Brown. You ought to get him on your show. You, you, but, you late, Coach. We already had Mr. Otis. <laughs> oh, I'm late. <laughs> and, and Otis, Otis was a, uh, he was like 205. He was a big bike. You know, and he ran track, and he was a fast bike. And so they ran a, a sweep to my side, and I was like 135, a 5'9", 135. And I had to hit that. 205 pound bike. So I hit him, and my shoulders 
a cop, my shoulder got hurt. And I didn't know it was a cloudy coast there that night. And, and as I was running into the dressing room at halftime, the coach put me by my side. He's from Louisiana Tech, Coach E.J. Lewis. He said, hey, baby, baby. He, he, he was a son of a He said, come here, boy. Come in. I sure like how you hit that big boy. I sure like, hey, <laughs> what's on with that soul? I said, oh, coach, no. But he said, I tell you where you come in, come down and lose down set tomorrow. We'll get out of and check it out. And so that's how I got to lose down the I got a couple more letters. Back then, like I got one from UL, uh, uh, Southwest to lose down. Uh, it's, it's ULL today, but it used to be USL. And I got a letter from some of Mike Lee. But that's all who recruited me. And so when my night in my senior year, they offered me a scholarship. And I said, man, I signed. My daddy was living then. And he signed me at home. And they brought me to school. The coach brought me to school. And. And they announced on the intercom, they said, Earl Sykes just signed a scholarship with Louisiana Tech. And everybody was congratulating me. So, and then I went to Tech. That's when all the problems started. <laughs> Boy, that was a, I, it's a tough cottage, man. So I, I, was, uh, I was a freshman. So the first day we ran, you know, you have to run a bulldog mile. And I didn't think about it. I had to run four laps. When they, they shot the gun, I've been trying around a 50 second quarter, one time around. <laughs> they said, hey, hey, you know so? you, you got to learn three more of them things. I said, what? Man, I got, I was so tired, but I did make it. I made it, I made it till uh, the, the time that I needed. And so I was on the scout team. And the scout team, you, you weren't with the defense where I came as the quarter, but. I said, man, I ain't make the first trip, the plane trip, the the off road game. I said, I can't, man. This thing, I'm gonna wait till I get back in practice. So when I start back practice, man, I start hitting everything. <laughs> and I was up on the scout team. They say, hey, coach, this, this guy don't need to be up here. I said, I start hitting everything to move. I was just hitting. And so <laughs> when I knew anything, they had put me back on the traveling team. So. Oh, they put me on the travel team. They uh, they put me on the kickoff team. I was on all special team. And the coach had a, a group he called the Wild Dog. And I was on the Wild Dog team. He treated us with respect. When, when, all, when, the, when we went to eat, he put the Wild Dog first. And so I was on that team. And I made a couple tackles on the kickoff team that year as a freshman. And then my sophomore year, my coach, Got me and my roommate was Kenny Sim. We came there together. Kenny Sim was from Ruston, and we was roommate. And he said, he said, I want y'all to ride somewhere with me. He took us on a ride. He said, y'all two are my starting cornerbacks next year. I said, oh man, I was scared. Of this. I said, oh no. He said, yeah, y'all gonna start for me. And so we, I had that year. We started. We went five and six, and we played a team up in the Johnson City, Tennessee. We played East Tennessee. And Coach Lewis was a great coach because he'll teach you everything what you need to know, and he was detailed. And so when we went up there to defensive back, they won a game. And I stopped the the boy had had a screen, and he was finished. He was I was on the other side of the field, and I ran I ran him down on the twenty yard line, and I tackled him. And they didn't get no fun, so they kicked a field goal. They had three points. And then later we scored. We had seven and three. So at the end of the game, it was about it was fourth down eleven. They was on that guy forty yard line. So I was the cornerback. So the receiver ran a post corner, went to the post, and he had spun me around. And then when I looked, they throw the ball to him, and he was jumping with the ball, and I just got a burst and knocked the ball out of his hand. And that was the last down. And when I got back to Tech, they, I was all in the newspaper saying, Sykes in the main of the hour. And I was just having my coach, hey, big boy, don't you get the big head on me now? Don't you get the big head? I said, no, I'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> So he said, I, we went five and six that year. So my junior year, I just started. Uh, we had a new coach and everything. And I, to this day, I look back and I know things that, 
I know I didn't start that, 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 that uh, my junior year, but my brother started. And tell you a story about my brother, how he got up there. I had, we were running 40 times. We had, our team was running 40s, and I ran one of the fast times in the 40. I ran a 4 4 40. So my head coach had went playing golf with a, with a high school coach in their high school, uh, Coach Vita Cap. And he said, uh, if you think I miss anybody in the in the uh, your district, he say he named a couple now. He say James Sykes. He said what? James Sykes. He say is that the brother of Earl? That's Earl. He said yeah, that's his brother. He passed the Earl. I had just ran a four four. <laughs> he say get him up here. My my coach called me and told my mom to bring him up there, and I brought him up there and they gave him a scholarship. That day, and that's how me and him got on the same team together. And so, I didn't play my junior year, but I didn't, I didn't get upset. I didn't cuss nobody out. I, I just did what I supposed to do. I went to class, I went to practice, I did exactly what I was supposed to do, and I prayed every night. Lord, I don't know what I did, I don't know how what happened, why they ain't starting me, but I'm just gonna leave it in your hands. And so I, I kept praying. And one day in the in spring practice, my, in my last year. I guess they were going to pick on me that day. So they were throwing everything in my side, and I was intercepting everything. They throwed at me about 10 times, and I was intercepting and knocking down. So the head coach said, get her out of there. And he said, Earl, you did a great job today. And then after practice, my, my position coach I just told me, I know you had it in you all the time. I know you had it in the and I said, man, I, ain't. I said, okay. And then that's the year we went. We won the South End Conference. We went 10 and 3. We beat Southern Miss, who had just beat Alabama on Bell Bryan last game. We beat them the game after they played Alabama and beat them. Wow. And so we had, we, we had a, uh, it, was a it was a pretty good year, but I just thank the Lord because he, he got me back in and, and it made it helped me play. We played Texas A&M. Uh, you know, Tony, uh, he used to be the head coach of Denver Broncos, Tony Kubet, I think. Right, I think right, 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 right. And I, I, I intercepted him at Texas A&M. I intercepted his ball. I knocked one down. I had seven tackles. I called the fumble. And that's when agents started writing me then, you know, uh, agents from the, the different agents. And I didn't know, I, I didn't know what's going on. So I didn't get when you are uh, in in college, the pro they come talk to the coaches and the coaches tell them who who they want, who they got they think to make the profession. So they didn't ever tell me nothing. They didn't tell that I wasn't invited to no pro day, they didn't tell me nothing. But by May I was just walking. They say, Earl, some uh personnel may call you from council. They say, give him a call. And they gave, got the number and they gave it to me. It was the head coach that brought it, the, the number to him. So I said, okay. I called him. He said, how like, would you like to come up and play with us in camp? I said, yeah. How does a thousand dollars sound? It's sad bone. I said, yeah. I ain't never had that much money in my life. I said, yeah, I think I ain't know about it. I could have got more. But I got the reason he did it. One of my players, he sent some films on. And he saw me on one of those films. And that's when I went to Calgary. And I stayed like a year, two years up there. And after that, I came. Then I started coaching and stuff. That's how I, I went from Delta, Virginia High to, uh, to Calgary. Right, right. And and, and this coach is uh, beautiful, um, how everything is starting to correlate with the show. You guys are right. re- you guys are refer- referencing each other every time we have a guest on Beyond the Game. You guys mention another legend that's been on the show. Like for you to men- mention Mr. Otis Brown just shows the respect that you guys had for each other, even though you was at rival right. schools. You guys were still in the same parish, and you guys had respect right. for each other, and, and that's a beautiful yes. thing, Coach. Yeah, yeah. That I look, uh, I respect Otis Brown. And I kept up with his career. I know he went to Jackson State. And I used to, when they come and play Grambling, I said, man, I wish I had a car. I'd go there and see Otis. 
Yeah. Right, right. And, and see, Coach, that's uh what we want to talk about when we come back. Um, we know that you 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 had you took the you took the rough road, um, but you came back and, and you 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 never uh gave up or, or got disturbed, and you went on to coach for thirty four years. And when we come back, Coach, we want you to kind of share uh your memories of coaching and some of the athletes that you came across on this journey up and down 165. When we return, it's back at legendary coach Earl Thaxton after this intermission. We're back. We're back. We're still here with legendary coach Earl Thaxton. Coach, before we left, uh, we was talking about your career from Delta High School all the way to the Calgary Stampede and the CFL. And we also mentioned how you guys respected each other uh, playing and rivalries. Uh, you mentioned Mr. Otis Brown. And, Coach, before we get into this next segment, I want to just bring to the attention that we used to think that we were the Noahs in the 90s. But as I'm looking at this thing, you guys in the 80s, 81, 82, Gary Ease, Mr. Otis Brown, now yourself, all of you guys were winning conference championships at the same time, Coach. Did you ever realize that? I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> and, Coach, this, this, this is the light I'm trying to shed on, on the parish and, and show these kids that it's always a different – alternative and I want to change the narrative about how people look at most Mohouse Parish and just to know that you guys were making history at the same time and you guys didn't have a clue that all you guys was conference champions. Didn't have a clue. Right. And, and you know coach uh speaking on that that's that's take uh a look back down memory lane because a lot of your players have been hitting me in the inbox and man have coach go back down memory lane. Let's go back down memory lane, Coach. Let's start about that culture that you were part of back in the day, coaching at old Delta High School. Oh, yeah, it was good. I was back in my hometown. I just, I just, and at, the, when, at practice, and stuff, I demonstrated, and I was, I thought I was still playing football. I go, it's a coach, don't show me no more. I got a coach. And then I run them off from the kickoff team, and I made everybody stay in the lane. I ran down with each one of them. <laughs> but what I said, in, in, in coaching, when I started coaching the Delta, and, you know, it had a saying that nothing ever great is never achieved with your great enthusiasm. And that's where I was. I was like an energized bunny. When I come out on the field, when I break a sweat, boy, I was just – and I always had a – Back in the day, you steal stuff from other coaches. And I, my coach, when I was in Tech, it was like we have a clock up there, a, a Russian State Bank clock, and it tells the time and the temperature. And sometimes it'll be 101 up there on the clock. And we'd be down there practicing. We said, God, it's always hot. And, and our coach would say, it's a cool day in Ruston, L.A. <laughs> I said, now, what do you think he is? <laughs> it's so hot out here, man. And I brought that to my coach. I say, wherever I was, I say, it's a cool day in Marouge, yeah, L.A. Cool and crisp. And it made me like, but they said, Coach, you crazy. And I tell them I left my, 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 uh, my air conditioning door, my, my house door open at home. And I say, don't you feel that cool breeze coming off the top? And they say, they always, <laughs> they say, I don't feel nothing, so it's hot out here. But I had, I, and like you ever heard this what they say like if you enjoy what you're doing it's never a day of work to you yes, and so sir. I it it never paid me I was man I was just and 
I ain't never know how much money I was getting paid. I just picked up my check, and I don't know if they will pay me right or not. I just was close. <laughs> right. And I know I had enough money to buy my, keep my cable bill on. And that's another thing I always used to say. I said, man, y'all better be glad my cable bill ain't paid because I'll be, I'll go crazy out here. <laughs> but <laughs> that was, that was the thing that Delta, I started and I got a, 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 a good taste of the of football. We, we was, we went to, as far as the second round in the playoffs and Couple of years we was zero and ten, one and nine, but we started winning again. And and I always had the aspiration of being a, a head coach. And I thought I'd get it at my own home high school, but that wasn't in the cards. And, and I thought at the time it was the worst thing I ever could because they they had picked another coach as the head coach, and I had been there six years and. Gave my heart out, and they didn't pick me. And the reason they said they didn't pick me is because I hadn't passed the, the national teacher exam yet. So I said, well, we ain't talking about teaching. We talking about coaching. <laughs> and so yeah, I never did win the Austin, but it was it was the best for me because I went to other programs, and I learned so much more to, to the aspects of coaching. So I learned so much more. Because when you go on to be on a different coach, you learn different techniques and you learn different things. And I say, now, nah. I say, I never would have traded, tra- tra- but it was a better for me to leave because I got a better knowledge of the game and I got better, you know, it was just a better place for me. And I enjoyed the first year down at Delta. It was hard. It was too, because I was just coming, I was young too. And, you know, when you're young, you think you're, you know everything, and you think you you just doing it. But as I grew and as I got older, I grew into a, a mature coach. And I look back at those times at Delta and say that was the best time for me because that taught me that I need to know more and I need to go to other places where people can teach me more. Right, right. So you 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 was at Delta, and we know Coach. Uh... Delta had a rich, rich, rich culture and in, in history that uh is kind of being washed out, I must say. And and I don't right. I don't want that to happen because the story hasn't been told yet of, about the right. history of Delta. And and coach kinda tell us, I know you were saddened to leave your place, but you came on the basket. What was that right. experience like and, and and was it a different pace of coaching and the speed of the game was different? Right, it, it was, it, and it was a higher classification, and the, the it was more, you know, you have to take more time to prepare your team and stuff. And I was under uh, Coach Rick Huston as when I came to Delta, and I I stayed there about four years and stuff, and and Coach Trimmer, and I was the uh, defensive back coach, and you played deep back. Yes, sir. I used to have you and your brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> and so. I was up there for four years, and, and under Rick Huston, I learned so much more because he was like, he was a, a technician of the game. He, he had, you had to know the X and the O's, and he had a whole, he was just more sophisticated, and you had to just learn his thing. I know one day, uh, I was, uh, we were, me and Coach Trimmer had gotten into it because Coach Trimmer didn't know what cover two was. And I said, man, I played cover two already college and stuff. So he, Coach Trimble wanted me to funnel him outside. And I said, no, you don't funnel him outside. You funnel him inside to his health, to the safety. He said, no, I want you to do that. I said. And I went out and spun my ankle, trying to show Coach Trimble how to run cover two. And, I, and, and, and that didn't even help me. I had to hop into the field house to get my own ice bucket. And put my foot in it because it would hurt so bad. <laughs> they wouldn't even help me in. So I said, Coach, then we, I finally got him to, to run cover two like it was. And then he didn't want to get out of it. I said, Coach, we can't stay in there all night. <laughs> we got so me and him always go back and forth, back and forth. So, and so when uh, Coach Hudson, before he left, he had got, uh, he told me it was a lot. We was zero and one. We had one. We uh, I think you might say we almost beat West Monroe 
you know, it was like 42 to 47. We had Fred Hopkins. Yes, sir. As the quarterback. And we like to be, we like to be the, a white top. Rustin. No, we like to be Neville. We beat we Neville. We, we beat Neville in 94. Right, yeah. That was the, and we were 5 and 5. Right. And we missed the playoff by one point, I think. But we had, the team that was playing in the in the championship was West Monroe and uh, Luck or somebody down in, in the Superdome. And we almost beat them. That's your hand. So that lets you know. That's your hand. Yeah, that's your hand. That lets you know then that they have had some athletes down there. So Trimble left. So uh, Huston told me, he said, Earl, do you think you're going to be the defense corner? I said, yeah, coach. So he said, well, write me up. Uh, give me a game. Make me a, a game book of what your, what your defense would be. So, man, I went to work. And I called people that I – I called coaches that I coached with. I said, send me some material. They send me some material. And then I put together a book and a defense. And I, put, I, I, I presented it to Coach Upton. And he was shocked. He said, Earl, it's cool. So, he had made me the defense coordinator. But <laughs> he left and went to Washington. And so, guess who they brought back to be the head coach was Coach Trimble. And I said, oh, no, Valley. I said, oh, God, I got to get out. So, my friend, Ben Hall, had me go to, uh, he said, Earl, we're looking for a defense coordinator in Washington. And I took my playbook up there. And he, he said, yeah, I like it. Come on, you, we're going to hire you. And that's how I got to Washington. But, I, you know, I left Bell for, after, the, after four years. I had been in Bell for four years. Well, you telling me something I didn't know, Coach. I didn't know that uh, Coach Trimble was temporarily the head coach. I don't think he started the season as the head coach, did he? Right. Yeah, he he, he quit before the season. And that's when they got the Hunter guy. You remember Coach Hunter? Yeah, you know, I was in college at the time, but I, I heard about right. it. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they got him. He he didn't – and I told when they – they say, uh, where uh, would you work with Coach Trimble? And I said, no, I, I think I got other avenues. I'm going to go somewhere else. And so that's when I went to, to uh, Washington, and I stayed there for seven years. Well, Coach, you you, you look at uh, – you've seen great talent in Delta. You saw great talent in Bastrop, and then you went on to Wiseman. Just, just off quick thoughts, who and what player or players that have left an impression in your mind for life? I got a lot of them. I say all of them. <laughs> right. A lot of them, they, 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 they probably, you know, they did, they the, you know, did everything I told them, and, and, it, and it's a lot of them. And I don't want to name names because I might leave somebody out. Right, right, right. <laughs> but right. it's been a whole bunch of uh, great athletes, man. And it's been athletes that could have went and did something, but they didn't have the academic to go along with it. And and that's why you know you say man you got to do both of them you got to get both got to get class and to be an athlete and it's been a lot like that it's been a lot of athletes like that and you you probably know in Bowser it's been a lot of uh, good athletes but they just couldn't pass the, in the classroom right and and, and coach uh we, me and Coach Brashaw I had Coach Brashaw on the show uh we had a really mm-hmm. good really good show and we kind of touched on that as well um. We had a lot of great athletes that didn't have the foundation, uh, didn't have the family support. Kenny Gaines uh, spoke about the same thing, not really having that support uh, when it comes to athletics and, and, and the parents really understanding the push and the drive and the things and the investments you have to make uh, with kids. Coach, before we go, I, I really want to ask you this question. Um, you have coached almost two, three generations. And what have you seen, especially with Mohouse Parish, from the 90s until you retired, what you do you see has become an issue? But I, I see that the kids don't love the game like they love it back in the 90s. They don't have that love for it. You know, and I think that too many other things is distracting them away from the sport, you know, and, and they don't. They don't want to put the effort in. They don't want to put the practice in. They don't want to put the work in what it takes to be a football player. And that's what I see from uh, – I saw it after I, 
when I was leaving. And when we, when I when I left in 2018, AB was the coach, and, and we went all the way down to the quarterfinals. And he did a good job, and he went all the way down to the quarterfinals. But during that time, I saw the drop off of how many people was on the field, you know, how many you had on the, like, now I think they got about 30, 30 players, 32. And that's what the love of the game and the kid work ethic so dropped off. They don't want to go out there and, and do all that hard work and, and, you know, like they did back in the day. Even when we was little, we had, we had like 80 kids on the team, didn't we? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, like that today, we, we had, a, but that today they don't, it's too many other things that are distracting them and they don't want it. While they play practicing football or playing football, they think they miss something. Well, I'm missing my brothers. I'm missing my friends. So we could be doing this and stuff. And so that's what I think. It's the love of the game. And, and football is a pretty rough game. You got to love it to play it, you know, because it's, it's rough. Right, Coach. I, I also think uh, we have to groom that that, that next uh Superstar, you will say, or, or, mm-hmm. that, or that next big big man on campus. I don't think nobody. Well, I don't really see anybody taking that role on. Like when I when we played, you wanted to play football, even if you didn't get in the game. You want to be around Fred Houston, Marcus Sauer, Matt Knight, yeah. Carl, Carl Gibbons, to Lance Sauer. Yeah. You, you wanted to be on the team with these people. You didn't care that we was losing, just to be on the team and see these guys put right. their highlight reel together. I've been with your boy, one of your yeah. favorite players, Hazo Causey. Oh, Hazo. Yeah, Hazo. Yeah, yes, sir. So yeah. I wanted to make you just mention one, Coach, because I know you love yeah. that Hazo Causey. <laughs> yeah. And, and me boy, and Hazo. He, he kept me up at night. You know, he all. <laughs> Hazo, you got deep outside. And <laughs> hey, Keith Carroll Johnson. <laughs> and old Keith Carroll. How you say? Damn, he can. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and Hazo, one of those guys, uh, r- because he only had one year to really do his thing. A lot of people right. don't remember Hazo. Man, Hazo was a human highlight reel coach. Yeah, yeah, he was a good athlete. Right, yeah, right. He was. But coach, yeah, we can, he can shut down people. Yes, sir. He played both sides of the ball, and I and I think we got to get back to that too, coach. We don't have the. Uh, Back then, we had the numbers, but we didn't have the athletes to really have right. 11 people doing this, 11 people doing that. Right. You know, to land, right. it was all Americans going both ways. Marcus saw you had yeah. free safety. Yeah. You know, it, it, yeah. it, we got to get back Marcus, to playing that. Marcus saw the won the game against Nelson. Right, right. In a zone. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and, and Coach, what? You know what another thing? Go, uh, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Coach. You know another thing I think? You don't have coaches like you used to. You don't. But it ain't enough coaches. They all, all You know, it's a teacher shortage. It's also a coach shortage. Right. You that it ain't. You ain't got enough coaches to to fill. You know, to fill the coaching staff now. Right. Right. And coach, what do you think is the uh, turnaround? I, I really want. Uh, you know, coach, I already respect you. I know we used to clown with you, and you you done made me laugh tonight, and and that's what. Coach, uh, you 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 kept us. Even if I, I remember, Coach, if you would condition us, you would make it funny, man. And, and I just want to tell yeah. you, <laughs> I want to tell you, I love you for that because I don't ever. Yeah, know, I love you too. I don't ever know nobody that made it funny, and we sitting here running tongue <laughs> out of our mouth, and you still making us laugh, man. Yeah. What, what yeah. Do you, what you what you think the turnaround? Uh, need what what turnaround you think needs to happen, Coach, for us to get back to just being contention. Uh, in Mo House Parish, not just in athletics, but you know, uh, 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 politics, um, education, uh, just just everything from a spiritual standpoint. All of what what right. do you think needs to right. happen, Coach? The best is is is, is, is like when the, when when the rich ruler asked Jesus, "What was the greatest two greatest commandments?" And Jesus said, "Love your." Love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. And the next one is unto that, love your neighbor as yourself. If we could just get together and love each other, that that would be a whole bunch of things to get, you know, to get everything right and, and stay together, you know. But we we don't want to do that. And then 
like like I, I pointed to, they need more coaches. They on the staff now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They need more coaches. They need they need junior high more coaches. They need junior varsity more coaches. They need high school more, more coaches. You look at a play like West Below, and they got like 30, 30 coaches on staff. And then you got you got somebody like a uh, Bowser have to go play them. We might have five, six, seven coaches, and they coaching JV freshman and varsity. So the load is too heavy on them. And they 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 tired when it comes down to coaching all these things because it takes a lot of energy to coach. It takes a, a lot of energy, and people just don't know how much time it takes to, to, to on your. That's why I didn't ever have a, uh, a vacation because I could get away. It was off season, then it was summer training. It was this, it was that. I had to always had some where I had to be to help with the football team. And so that's what you're going to have to get by. You have to get a, so a lot of coaches, which we don't have. It's a shortage of coaches. It's a shortage of teachers. And so you you behind the eight ball. Because you ain't got enough coach. You got two coaches for the junior high. And how many positions you got? You got like Six. eight positions on the, on the team. Yeah, you, you, got, six, you, you got, got 66 you got, total. Yeah, yeah. And so you you behind the eight ball, you you can't. And that's what we always, that, that we was dealing with when I was coaching the last part of it, we didn't have enough coaches. You know, like we had a JV game Tuesday night. We got some coaches on the Boston step that have to go down and coach them. And, you know, they don't like that because, you know, they if they want to coach, they want to be by themselves coaching the, the JV. Separate coaches were separate, but they don't want to have to do coach the boss and then come coach the JV too. So it's 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 a, it's hard. That's what I, and it's hard. It's that's a a plan. You don't. I don't know what kind of plan you get because ain't, ain't nobody get into teaching no more. Everybody getting out to teach the profession because you know it ain't playing much, and you know kids are uh, some of the kids are bad. They don't. It's just a whole thing that that uh, the system is going to because of how the things are happening in the world today, you know. Right, right. Coach, and you know, uh, like I say, always much respect. And uh, like I told you, you, it's a lot of people love you. And to hear your story, yep. Coach, uh, ha- has been one for the ages. And I see why you're getting so much love. I, I always believe somewhere down the line, Coach Staxton, Got overlooked in that head coaching job. <laughs> yeah, I did, but the best thing that ever happened to me. I enjoy being the defense coordinator. Any position that I coach, I always enjoy. You know, I made it for him. You all, and, you that, always that, did. Yeah, yeah. And I love you. I, I, mean, I always remember you and your brother and stuff, man. I said, man, I'm older boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I. I always love y'all. I, do. I always y'all be my favorite. Some of my favorites. Yes, sir, coach. And uh, we thank you for coming on the show and and dropping those jewels and gems on us, coach. And uh, whatever endeavors you have, uh, just hit up Emerge Three Six if you have some ideas that you want to help the kids with, coach. You know I'll help you. And and whatever you need, coach, you just let us know. And I want you to enjoy your retirement. But before we get rid of you, coach, I want you to lead us in some prayer, and we're gonna get out of here. Okay. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for letting us have the ability to come in and play these sports, Lord. We we ask you for sportsmanship, Lord. We ask you for the togetherness, Lord. We know that you say whatever we do to glorify you, that's what we want to do today, Lord. Oh, Lord, help us. Help this city of Bath be a better place. Help the school system, Lord. And, Lord, help our kids, Lord. Let them know you, Lord. Help them to find a help us give give somebody a, a plan to show our kids what it's like, Lord. But uh, if it ain't even me, help me to to show them. A, and if I can help you any kind of way, Lord, just just help us do what we can, Lord, to help the kids and see. Let us stay together because we know under you, Lord, we all have to be one, and and, and no one is different than another. 
everybody is the same, Lord, and we thank you for that. We ask you to be things in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, and we love you, Coach. I'm your host, Maserati. This has been All right. in Wall Social Civic Club. We want to thank once again Coach Earl Thaxton, Northeast Louisiana Counseling, Stepping Stone LLC, and none other than Involved Social and Civic Club, where we learn to love, learn, live, and laugh. Until next time, y'all get involved, y'all stay encouraged, and most of all, y'all stay immersed. We out of this thing. I know you thought I was gone, but I made it through the fire. Turned you back on me, homie, and it was such a surprise. But the struggle out here, everybody just trying to get by. Mama told me a long time ago, keep my grass cut low, so I can see these snakes when they approaching my door. In this game, I seen a lot of soldiers sell their soul for the bag. And I seen a lot of close friends fall out behind ass. That's why I keep my circle tight, family over everything. Family over everything. Told at a young age, don't be scared to let my nuts hang. Man, it's law of attraction, got me moving how I move. And along the way, there's some you win, some you lose. Yeah, life is blessed. Dude had it to an innocent child. These streets that got real crazy, these youngsters buck wild. Not to mention, cops killing brothers for fun. Revolutionary prepare from the dough, the chosen one is DJ.